Welcome to the Vivo Next 3. You might have already seen that teaser video I made about a month ago, but now the phone has been officially announced, we can really get into the meat of it. This is the phone's retail package, and you can tell straight away that a lot of love has gone into it. There's a 44 watt super flash charger, a pair of noise cancelling earphones, of course the phone itself, and just below that a USB-C cable. Now for the fun bit. So, with a record-breaking display, an ultra-high-resolution camera, and some class-leading hardware, the Vivo Next 3 is a really impressive package on paper, but what I want to do in this video is compare to the Galaxy Note 10 Plus, the current kingpin of Samsung's lineup, and arguably the best Android has to offer, and in the end, we're going to crown a winner. The short conclusion is this. Each of these devices really helped me appreciate what the other was able to achieve. As for what exactly I mean by that, here's the longer answer. I really like how the Note 10 Plus feels. It is a massive phone, but it's only next to something like this do you realize just how good of a job Samsung has done making it feel manageable. The Note is far lighter, and this combined with it being a sliver thinner makes it feel substantially more svelte. If you've had the chance to pick up one of Apple's newer iPads, I would describe picking up the Note 10 Plus as a similar experience. It's kind of like one of those, oh wow, that is a lot lighter than I thought it was going to be moments. It is a little bit sharper around the corners, but overall it wins the prize for ergonomics. And the Vivo doesn't even feel bad, it just feels like about what you'd expect it to. You'll start to see, and actually a big reason why I made this video is that whilst these two phones look very similar on paper, and to some people probably even in person, they're made with very different design philosophies. Whilst the Note is built on refinement and polish, the next feels new, daring, and experimental, and that also translates to the way they look. Aside from that psychedelic aura glow option, the Note is a fairly plain looking phone, whilst the Nex introduces a pretty bizarre circular camera setup, kind of reminiscent of a mechanical watch face. And just when you thought you'd seen every single possible smartphone finish, here's another one. In bright light, you get wide bands of rainbow color, and as you tilt the phone, it turns into a more consistent gradient. And then you've got buttons, where while Samsung has mildly experimented by moving all the physical buttons to the left of the phone, Vivo has just straight up removed them. In this continuous pursuit of complete seamlessness, they've been replaced with virtual equivalents, which, to be fair, still give a satisfying response and they're easy to feel for, but I wouldn't call this in itself an advantage. What is an advantage, though, is the fact that Vivo retained the headphone jack, whilst the Note didn't. So, kicking off the deep dive with a bit of charging, we've already seen that the Nex comes bundled with a 44 watt charger, and whilst the Note is technically capable of 45 watts, it only comes bundled with a 25 watt adapter, so that's what most people are going to use. As expected then, Vivo steams ahead, and by the time the Note 10 Plus has hit 8%, the Nex is already on 13. The battery capacities themselves are pretty similar, and actually pretty high on both. You get a 4,500 mAh cell on the Nex and 4,300 mAh on the Note. Do you ever wish that there was one smartphone released per year that had the best elements of all the other devices? Sometimes I do, and having the cameras on these two devices together is an agonizing example of that, because there is just so much joint potential here. Both bring something completely different to the table, and in this case, we're talking the Vivo's ability to capture stunning 64 megapixel photos, and the Note's color processing and its video quality. So yes, providing you're in good light, the Next 3's 64 megapixel photos look spectacular. I wasn't sure what to expect going in, but these photos are notably more detailed when you crop in than the Note's 12 megapixel ones. I wouldn't use the 64 megapixel mode in low light, but I was surprised to see, even in average lighting, even when the subject isn't being blasted by the sun, it's still getting way more information in. Vivo also has a super macro mode that lets you get really tight focus on objects that are right in front of you. Plus, the phone's wide f1.8 aperture compared to the notes means that photos in the day have a lot more natural background blur. This phone truly has the potential for even more impressive and more cinematic shots than on the Note, but generally, I find that Samsung processes color better, and by comparison, the next shots can seem a little pale. Both of these phones are brilliant for taking photos, but the Note is well ahead when it comes to both video quality and video stabilization. Oh yeah, and this applies to the front cameras too. Another thing worth noting, if you were trying to vlog, for example, the Galaxy Note 10 Plus's front camera is far more capable. It records at not just 4K resolution versus 1080p on Vivo, but dynamic range is better, even the audio quality is better. 
On a bit of a side note, if you do enjoy straight to the point tech content like this, a sub would be massively appreciated. There is a lot more coming, especially with the whole slew of smartphones that are about to drop very soon. Anyways, one very important consideration with the Next 3 is the fact that the chip inside this phone is faster than both the Snapdragon and the Exynos versions of the Note 10 Plus. Armed with the Snapdragon 855 Plus, the Next 3 is around 10% more powerful, but the Note has a whole extra 4 gigs of RAM and faster UFS 3.0 storage. So in a weird kind of way, both phones are absolute performance tanks, but they specialize in different tasks. The Next 3 will pull ahead in gaming, whilst the Note can handle more simultaneous applications at once and should be able to load things faster. I tried playing World War Heroes 2 on the Next, and you are looking at ultra settings at a nearly stable 60 frames per second. It's gorgeous, easily some of the best graphics I've ever seen on a phone. And that brings me onto the elephant in the room, that viewing experience. They call this the waterfall display because of how it slopes into an almost vertical slant on the sides. And I've seen a lot of conversation about it. There are a lot of lovers, there are a lot of haters. So this is my take. I spent a long time looking at and using the curved panels on Samsung phones, but it's only when you see this side by side that you realize just how curved the next threes is. I mean, if you look at this phone from the front, the sides pretty much disappear. And with most games completely filling the screen, it's impressive. It really does, as advertised, make it feel like your content is spilling over the sides. That said, this also makes me appreciate that the Note's display doesn't discolor nearly as much on the sides, and the fact that it remains responsive across its entire width. With the Vivo, these waterfalls are not really made for touching. It's not like you're getting more display to interact with. Mind you, that's needed, because if they were responsive, you'd be suffering accidental touches like crazy. But this also means that the waterfall is purely a visual thing. It's not like you can all of a sudden start scrolling lists using the sides of your phone. Also, whilst both are similarly large Super AMOLED panels, the Note 10's display is higher resolution, with less screen glare too. Although, the fact that Samsung now filters blue light automatically from your display does mean the Vivo has cleaner, brighter whites. So, waterfall display. I don't mind it. It looks impressive, it feels futuristic, but at the same time it's probably not up there with the priorities in terms of what I want from a phone display. Both devices also use in-display fingerprint scanners. The speed is about the same, but Samsung's ultrasonic scanner is technically superior. It needs less pressure to activate, and it can work even when your fingers are wet. Although, personally, not a fan of that unlock animation. It feels lacking, especially when compared to Vivo's completely customizable offering. And, speaking of customizable offerings, the software you're looking at here is Vivo's FunTouch OS. And it shares some aesthetic traits of Samsung's One UI skin, like the rounded square icons, but under the hood, they work pretty differently. With Vivo, for example, you swipe up once from the bottom and you can see all your quick toggles, which is actually faster than the two swipes and a stretch you need to do the same on the Samsung. They've both got a dark mode, they've both got powerful battery saving features, and both place an emphasis on reachability, which is pretty important when you're handling screens of these dimensions. All right, so up until this point, really close battle. You're probably thinking, I don't know, which one is winning? But there are some things about the Note, and in fact, quite a few of Samsung's more recent flagships that I like, and that I think give it a bit of a leg up. The Note 10 Plus has micro SD card support, the ability to wirelessly charge and wirelessly reverse charge other devices, plus an amazing haptic engine. In fact, the larger vibration motor in this phone is a big part of why there's no headphone jack here. It has effectively taken its place. And I get it, better vibration quality sounds like one of those take it or leave it, don't really care kind of features. Until you use it. Typing and just the subtle vibrations you feel when interacting with the UI feels spot on on the Note. You get IP certification for water and dust resistance and there's more, even the speakers are fantastic on the Note. Because the phone has an earpiece that's so tiny it's almost invisible, Samsung have switched the speaker audio to instead come from the top of the phone, as well as the main speaker on the bottom. It sounds a lot more immersive than on the Vivo, which only has a single unit. And then, whilst it's not a massive deal for me, we also can't ignore the fact that the Note comes with the S Pen. It's just impressive that this is being stored inside the phone, and yet they've still managed to make a phone that is both slimmer and lighter and contains a similar sized battery. 
Oh yeah, and both phones also have a massive 256 gigs of internal storage, and both have a 5G variant. But for what it's worth, in every single room I tried, the Wi-Fi speed on the Nex ranged from slightly faster to a lot faster than the Note. So, what is the conclusion here? I mentioned earlier that each one of these devices really helped me appreciate the other, and hopefully as we've gone through this video, you've started to see why that is. These are two top-level flagship smartphones, but they've gone about achieving this in pretty different ways. That waterfall display, the flagship feature of the Nex, is cool, I like it, but I don't think it adds much to the daily smartphone experience. I think things like great haptics or the speaker quality on the Note are subtler, more important features. That said, the Nex brings a lot more than just this display. It's larger battery, it's faster charging, it's more powerful chip, and the headphone jack, they all make it relevant. But if price was no object, I would still side with the Note on balance as the more well-rounded device. Ultimately though, the cost is important, and so as soon as I get the final confirmed prices, I'm gonna drop them in a pinned comment below. And so based on that, let me know which phone you think won this competition. Thanks a lot for watching. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one.